one thing that I don't ever want y'all to do out here is to ever get it twisted, all right? I want you to understand and understand that even in a church, you're going to have to be weary of the opposing opponent, right, when it comes to the spiritual warfare because you have to understand and understand that a lot of these churches are, are part of what is known as religious cults. With that being said, man, let's go ahead and jump into the story. I want y'all to hear what it is that she has to say about her getting hacked by someone that was in the church. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Yeah, I'm about to expose every lie they didn't told, like how they trafficking kids and why they ain't got a soul. They feed no Check out this video, trying to man. destroy the globe. They got weather control. They even making it snow. But we can't run from it. Gotta grab it by the antler. I was hexed at 11 years old by a woman in the church that was jealous of my mother. Uh, my father was a minister, and my mother was very spiritual. And people did not believe that my mother and father should have been together because. They believe my mother was a witch, which is ironic, right? My father had an appreciation and um, the food that was prepared for everyone, I took one bite and I fell ill immediately to the point where I had to go lay in the backseat of my father's car. That moment led to me being paralyzed from the neck down and a three month hospital stay. I never received a formal diagnosis um, and I was told from the doctor that I would never walk again. Like any loving parents, um, my mother and father were willing to try anything and they were looking for answers and that led them to Maladoma Somme. At that point, we had given up on modern medicine and we had began to fight a spiritual war that included um, spiritual baths and ritual. Within 30 days, I had taught myself how to walk again. And I'm not saying it like I'm just, you know, no, by the grace of God. Um, I regained strength in my limbs after being told that it would not happen and that I was sent home in a pink wheelchair and they gave me a walker and that was pretty much it. I made a full recovery. I moved on with my life, uh, went back to school like nothing happened. But every so often, I think about that. And how those same church folks would accuse me of being a witch and practicing witchcraft. But I was hexed by a woman in the church. And the sad part is, is that that's how it often happens, y'all. It's always happening to someone for the reason of something that someone earlier on in their life did, okay? When I mean by that, it could be even before you came. Now she's hexing, that hex could carry on to somebody else. That's sad, man. But let's go ahead and just get into this other video real fast, y'all. I was a little girl. I was told by my pastor that I inherited gifts from my bloodline by ancestors that were evil and demonic. And I was told to pray away the gifts and to, oh, what was the word he used? Denounce. He told me to denounce every gift that, this man told me, you are to denounce every gift that is in your bloodline. Spiritual people, I know y'all like can feel the weight of what he had me do. He said, denounce every gift that is in your spiritual bloodline. And I did. And I'm gonna tell you the story about how all of this happened. What did I see? What did I know as a child? And how early did it start? It started from as early as I can remember. I wanna say about five and probably sooner, but I don't have memories of it. There would be times when um, I would know when people would pass away. I had a strange connection with death. And it's strange that like I talk about grief now. Um, I would know when people would pass away. And also people in my family, when they would pass away, like uncles or, you know, cousins and stuff like that, they would come, we would kind of meet in this white room the night before they would pass. It's almost like we would meet in this white room and we would discuss things and then they would pass away and they would go on. And I know with my um, great uncle, he came to me the night before he passed away and we met in that same white room. He had a white suit on. He looked so heavenly and angelic. And we talked about some things and when I woke up, I heard the news that he passed away. He was afraid of cemeteries. Not because I was afraid of like the dead, but 
oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to tag my sister so she can like co-sign on this. I was terrified of cemeteries. Whenever my mom would drive past the cemetery, I would close my ears, close my eyes, I would duck and I would have to do breathing exercises knowing stuff about the people who had passed away, knowing things about their lives. Another thing that happened, and this one is very sensitive, and I'll just give a trigger warning for this one. There was a time when my mom, we were in the car, driving past this wooded area, and I just kept telling her, there's a girl over there. There's a girl over there. There's a girl over there. And we eventually saw that there was a young woman who was found over there. And I struggled with depression a lot as a child. I was diagnosed with clinical depression at a very young age because I had all these gifts and I was told that I was demonic and evil and to suppress my gifts and I had to pretend that I was not connected to everything that is also the sad part about that is y'all is that the same thing that we see a lot of individuals doing right now in this time and this hour is the same things that we bought or someone in the time and the hour that Jesus existed on this realm of reality for those of you who vibrated the frequency of the Bible man they were witnessing him do the same thing. And instead of, well, he was being called demons at that time as well. But now guess what they're doing? They're glorifying him. See how funny that is while you're being called the demon. Years and years from now, man, they're going to glorify the time that it was many, many people out here that was capable of doing what they're doing right now. Just imagine that. Another thing is I see auras. Well, what I think are ours. I see colors around people. And this has been a natural part of my eyesight since I've been on this planet. I have never not seen them. The last one that really, really like got my mom's attention. We were in the car driving somewhere, my mom and all of my siblings. And I told her, I had to be about five or six. I told her, don't go that way. Don't go that way. There's going to be an accident between a white van and a yellow car. Like, how strange is that? It ended up happening. We got stuck in traffic for so long and eventually rode past that white van and the yellow car. So let's fast forward to this pastor. We went to this church and I was told that I knew too much and I knew that I saw too much and I saw things that I had no business seeing. And I was told to denounce every last one of my spiritual gifts almost like a spell it was almost like a spell that he told me to do if i can be real and he told he told me the words that i needed to say that i needed to repeat after him and he told me you need to say these words and you need to denounce every gift that is in your bloodline i spoke those words out of my mouth and i denounced every last gift that was in my bloodline which is so dangerous oh my gosh because that not only affected me but it affected everyone in my bloodline the dreams stopped the intuition stopped it eventually stopped and i felt normal i was so happy like yes i'm not a demon anymore <laughs> i'm not a demon and and i'm not evil i don't have these you know these horrible evil gifts and then i started to become even more depressed because i was suppressing who i was and I didn't feel like myself. I started to spiral emotionally because I was told by people who I was supposed to be. I was told who I was supposed to be by someone who was afraid of me seeing the true them. Now let's get, let's, let's fast forward to April of last year when my mom passes away. My spiritual gifts and my intuition heightened like nobody's business all of these things these gifts that i had came rushing back in like all at once and it was overwhelming and i didn't understand what was going on and you can see check on my page i talk about like all of the spiritual things that happen with grief and with this transition and now i'm in a place where i'm in a place where i want to be who I am. I'm in a place where I know that what is in me, what was placed in me before I got put on this planet is good. Everything about me is good. Everything about me has a purpose and every gift that I have is needed. If your leader asks you to diminish who you are so that you don't see, are they really a leader? And what are they hiding? So I have accepted that I have gifts and it's okay. And I'm not evil or demonic for knowing. 
See, this is the common story for the chosen ones and a prime example of what it is that I'm always saying about how you were special since you were a child and there were people around you who actually knew that you were special and they went that extra mile to try to dim that light in you because they were intimidated by it for whatever reason. Either that reason being them getting exposed for something that they've done or just by, you know, from a religious standpoint in which, you know, they were told that to have those gifts went against what everything that, you know, the most high stood for. You were demonic if you was able to see beyond the veil. You see what I'm saying? And, you know, I'm just glad that now that we at this this age we in right now, people are being more acceptance of it you know imagine you going into the church and praising somebody that's sitting there being a prophet for the most high because he's done it doing it under the name of christian then somebody else comes along and they're coming along to give you that same message but since they're not doing it under the title of a christian a muslim or whatever religious organization that you would deem them necessary to be with in order to be able to do that you call them a demon just imagine that but with that being said y'all let me know in the comment section below how you feel about this situation man and um you know as always i just want to leave you as i came i want you guys to always always be aware because to be aware is to be alive and as always peace family peace meaning positive energy always creates elevation